Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? Welcome back. So for those of you who are new, right, my name is Rainer and what you're watching is what I call my weekly market analysis where each week I share with you potential trading setups in the markets and to share them with you, right? So basically, my approach is trend trading. I like to trade with the trends, right? Some trades, I will look to ride the trend and some trades, I'll just take a swing in the market. So basically, right, I like to trade with the trend. But how I exit this kind of trades is really depending on you know, the context of the markets you are in. If the market is really strong, of course, I'll look to ride the trend. But if the market is you know, it's not looking too favorable, then you know, more often than not, I'll usually choose to take a swing out of the markets. So this, you know, the weekly videos that I do is basically you know, sharing my thought process with you and the markets I'm looking at. I trade mainly the Forex and Futures market. And all this is in the hopes that for you to you know better understand what trading is all about. You know, what is the reality of trading, right? There is there is no hype, no fluff down here. I don't show you only winning trades. I show you both the winning and the losing trades and my thought process behind the trades. Okay, so in this week's video, I'm going to share with you my take on the US dollar weakness. I want to share with you how I'm going to express my this opinion on the US dollar weakness and which are the trading setups I'm going to take, right? In anticipation that if the dollar US, the dollar weakness continues, these few setups would, you know, hopefully look to play out according to plan. So all this and more in this week's market analysis. I'll see you there. Okay, so first thing first, I just want to say a big thank you to the traders who actually left me, you know, very positive feedback and comment, right? Kelvin, Ethic, Nicholas, Nils, G Money, right? They have basically, you know, left me a comment on my videos and, you know, I read every single one of them and I take time to reply them as well. And really, right, I, I really appreciate all the support I'm getting, right, because it really tells me that whatever I'm sharing, whatever I'm doing is something that it's being enjoyed by you and it basically keeps me motivated to, you know, keep churning out these videos on a weekly basis. So a big thank you, right, couldn't have done it without any of you and I truly appreciate it. Now, back to the markets, right. The first thing we are looking at is the US dollar index. So that you look at the US dollar index, you can see that it has been in a very strong uptrend, right? For this portion over here. I think this was from the 2014 to the 2015 period. Then what happened in 2015 to 2016 is that we enter a period of range, right? So I think I'm not sure if you noticed by now is that the market isn't always, you know, trending all the time. It will move from a period of trend to range. And from range back to trend. This is the, the principle of the markets, right? If you look at the charts, this is how basically the market operates. It's never going to be in a range all the time. And also it's not going to be in a trend all the time. So at this point in time, what is really interesting to me is that the US dollar is showing signs of weakness, right? You see, this is the area of support. And on Friday, you had this strong bearish close over here. Look at the size of the bearish close. Right, in fact, let me just zoom in a little so you can see better. Right, look at this close over here. So very bearish. Right, so my guess is that there's a likelihood of it retesting back these lows over here. And if it does break below this area of support, right, this area of support on a higher time frame, if it can break below this area of support on a higher time frame, there's a good chance we can see price smashing lower, possibly even retesting back the lows. I think somewhere, you know, towards the left, somewhere, somewhere here. Right, so US dollar, I'm bearish at this point in time. And if you want to go short the US dollar, right, you can short either, either through the ETF, right? I think which ETF was it? It's either the UUP or the UDN, I'm not too sure. That is something that you have to look at. Alternatively, you can actually go and trade the other markets that are correlated with the US dollar. For example, for example. The US Treasury bond, it has a negative correlation with the dollar. So when the dollar weakens, the bond would rally. So you can see that over here, right? Over the last few days, it has been showing this strong rally over here. So if you want to, you know, take advantage of the dollar weakness, one, one way you can go about it is to trade the Treasury bonds. So in this example over here, I am interested in the 30-year bond because you look at the weekly time frame, it is basically in an uptrend, right? How do you tell it's an uptrend? Very simple, right? Higher lows higher highs. Simple as it is. You look at the moving average, this one is the red one, 20 period moving average, the blue one is the 50, the black one here is the 200. All are basically pointing higher in the same direction. So this is another way that you know you can tell that you know the trend from the short term, medium term and the longer term, they are all basically pointing towards the same direction. So on a daily time frame, here is where I'll be looking to enter this market. If you notice that price is basically 
has broken out of this, what it call, downward trend line, right? So this is the trend line that is broken on a Friday. So I'll be looking to get long, right, on Monday and get my stops of 2 ATR, which I believe is somewhere over here. But I don't really have to wait for price to, you know, hit my stops before I exit my trade because this is a, what they call a swing high. So I would expect price to, you know, if it does retrace to find previous resistance, turn support and rally higher. Okay, because if it fails to hold, right, this previous resistance turn support fails to hold and it closes lower, then I'll just manually exit the trade because I know I'm wrong by then. So this level is a level I'll be looking at. If price closes below it, I'll just manually exit the trade. So you want to have, you know, structure of the markets to reference from. Right? So this is how you can actually, you know, better set your stops based on structure of the markets instead of, you know, using a random dollar amount, which don't really make, make much, of, much of a sense. Okay, so this one way is to be bullish on the bonds. Alternatively, if you want to be, how to say, uh, express your dollar weakness, you can do so by trading the metals, right? You have gold, silver, platinum, palladium, pretty much up to you, you know, how which, which metal you want to trade. But the one that caught my interest is actually silver. So silver, for those of you who remembered, right, silver was a, a trade that we all took recently. I traded a breakout, traded my stop loss using the 20 period moving average and got stopped out over here, this, this bar over here. So I think it's a, it's a profit of about 1.5R and that's about it. So right now we have another potential setup coming in. And what is this setup is basically, right, this is the area of resistance, right? Resistance, resistance. And when price breaks above it and comes back, previous resistance becomes what? Support, right? Previous resistance turn support. And right now price is at this area of support. And on Friday, on Friday it basically closed much higher. So this is basically a long signal for me, right? Seeing that price has come into this previous resistance turn support and had a huge rally higher. So I'll be looking to get long and get my stops below this low over here. And on top of it, if you want to, you know, further look at the, the micro price action on the lower time frame, you can basically see that on the forward time frame, price has basically taken out this high over here. Okay? So one thing to further reaffirm the strength is that it can retrace us and then break out higher, giving you a higher high and a higher low. Okay? So on a daily time frame, basically, you know, it's looking bullish and looking to get long on silver as well. So just to, you know, to share with you something, right? I think this this is a kind of setup that a lot of traders would, would look at, right? They like to look at, for example, price, you know, like as I mentioned, coming into previous resistance, right? Now turn support. Then they look for a bullish confirmation like a pin bar and engulfing pattern. In this instance, an engulfing pattern. And they get long. Right? And this is pretty much, I'll say, a decent way to trade, right? It's possible. But the biggest problem by waiting for this kind of candlestick confirmation is that you're not going to get many entries on a month-to-month -month basis, right? Let, let's admit it, right? I'm sure you probably face this issue as well. If you wait for, you know, for example, an uptrend and price retraces to an area of support and then it gives you a pin bar and then you go long. If you solely wait for this kind of trading setups only on a daily basis, on a daily chart, you're not going to get many trading setups on a month-to-month -month basis. Maybe, you know, two trades a month, three trades a month. Maybe, you know, no trades at all, right? I don't know. So this is the problem with being a one-trick pony, right? It is, it is not wrong, but chances are it's going to mess with your trading psychology, right? Because you'll be thinking, I'm a trader, but I'm not even taking any trades. And other traders out there, you know, they are, they, are, they, are, they are making money. I'm not making money. I'm waiting for a setup that hardly comes. So is my trading plan sound? Am I doing something wrong? So these are the kind of thoughts that's going to mess up your trading because you're waiting for something that doesn't really happen often. Okay, so I, I would want you to go and think about this, right? If that if you have a bias, for example, you are say, in this example, I'm bearish on a, on a dollar, right? Or say, for example, you are now bullish on the metals. If you're bullish on the metals, you need to ask yourself, what trading setup can you potentially take to express your bullish view on the market? Right, let me repeat, right? So basically, what setups, right, can you take to express your views in the market, right? So a lot of time, right, I know a lot of those uh, traders who trade candlestick patterns, they focus entirely on the pin bar and the engulfing pattern. And when they don't get this kind of patterns, these exact patterns that they are hoping for, they miss the entire trade altogether, right? So I want you to go back and think, you know, what other trading setups can you take to express your views or opinions in the market, right? Don't just, I would say, don't just limit yourself to, you know, that few candlestick patterns because honestly, sometimes the market isn't going to give you such patterns and, you know, it's, it's going to, you know, move away 
without giving you the, the patterns you're looking for. I can share with you a few more examples, right? For traders, for example. The Pound Canadian is another one. This over here, right? Downtrend. We came into this area of resistance. So at this point in time, traders will be at this area looking for a pin bar or engulfing pattern. But I can tell you, it didn't happen, right? There's nothing down here. But still, right? If you're waiting for it, then you've missed this shot towards the downside over here. But if you look carefully on the 4 hour, you basically have an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And this is the neckline. So if it does break below the neckline, it tell, it's telling you that there's a possibility of price trading lower. So that's what, what happened, right? On the 4 hour and on the daily time frame, you can see that it broke lower, about to retest this swing low over here. So this is my, you know, my takeaway for you in this week's market analysis, right? Besides looking at the dollar weakness, is to think about the setups that you can take to express your opinion on your market, right? So there are different ways to express the different setups, right? As I mentioned, right, I like to trade using the dynamic support and resistance. I trade breakouts. I trade uh, false breakout and stuff. So go back, think about this, right? And I hope this really, you know, helps improve your trading performance, right? Because I have traders telling me, you know, Rainer, I don't have much trading setups. I'm waiting for something that hardly comes. I don't even feel like a trader. Okay, I know what you mean, right? I feel you, right? Because I've been there myself. So, okay. So something for you to think about. So that's all I have for you in this week's market analysis. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button below so you always get the latest updates on my weekly market analysis and video blog post. With that, I wish you all good luck and good trading. If there's anything, feedback or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. With that, good luck, good trading, bye-bye.